Hi folks, it's me, Robert J.E. Simpson here again. Uh, thank you for tuning in. And this is day two of my COVID-19 vlogs. Um, this is my attempt to try and be slightly more positive uh, whilst the world just crumbles in around us and, and talk a little bit about the creativity um, that, that I want to do, that I do do, that I'm hoping to do during this uh, and some reflections on some of the work that I've done recently and hope to be doing more of. And I thought today I'd hit on one of the things that I'm, I've kind of been really proud of the last couple of years um, and that's my work on mental health uh, and in particular uh, a project that, that came out and seemingly came out of nowhere um, but has involved these two fellows here behind me on the screen. Um, this is Robert Ross, British comedy film historian, a man that uh, whose work I knew long before I ever met him and got to call him a friend. I, I, I call, I think actually this book here uh, may have been the first of the books that he had um, had a hand in that that I had uh, bought and read. I've got a whole bookshelf full of them, which I'm not going to show because it's far too embarrassing to have bookshelves full of your friend's work. Um, makes you sound kind of creepy. Um, so yeah, so I knew his stuff, and uh, he's been a mate for for a very long time. And then this fella here in the middle is Tony Slattery, uh, an actor and comedian who some of you may recall. Um, I knew him as a teen, watching him on Whose Lines Anyway on Channel 4. Uh, I loved his, his quick wit and his repartee and his uh, infectious humour. Uh, him and uh, working along the likes of uh, Mike McShane, Juicy Lawrence and Clive Anderson. The, their, their chemistry was just absolutely captivating and I certainly never thought I'd be in a situation where I was sharing a stage with either of them, let alone the both of them together. Um, we've done a couple of projects over the last year uh, and the show that you probably at some point seeing me or one of the others promoting has been our Comedy of Madness event. Um, we've run it twice so far. We were in talk about doing it again, although COVID-19 has possibly put scuppers to that for the foreseeable future. Um, but this was a show that was geared around um, both a, a, a desire to explore our own um, experiences of mental health, uh, so we deliberately focused it on, on male mental health, uh, and also to look at some of our comedy heroes. Um, I suppose this is partly uh, made a little bit easier because you know we're working with Tony as well, uh, and Tony has spent the last year working on a, a documentary for BBC Horizon. We think it's coming out at some point in the next couple of months, although with again with COVID nineteen, nobody knows uh, when it's actually going to get aired. Um, but Tony had been had been doing that program, looking at his own bipolar and 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 trying to 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 get a clearer sense of a definition um, and to try and work through his own issues. And um, Rob had, uh, you know, has, has, has had his own ups and downs as well. And that's, that's for him to tell, not for me to tell his story for him. And I've certainly had my own. I mean, those of you who've known my work for a long time will know that I occasionally write about my own experiences. I have gone through the, the mire over the years, um, had a couple of breakdowns, have blogged about them and talked about them and, and sort of incorporated them gradually into my own work. Uh, and so we wanted to do a show that would sort of acknowledge our own experiences, but also to kind of address the elephant in the room, this, this sort of preconceived notion that we seem to have that uh, a lot of the comedy geniuses are, are fraught with their own mental health and anxieties and issues. And we looked at people like Robin Williams and Peter Sellers and Kenneth Williams, Frankie Hard, um, you know, Tony Hancock, um, very, very heavily British TV skewed. Um, but nonetheless, it's a great starting on point to open up those conversations because I think because they're celebrities, we all think that we have a, a knowledge of them. Uh, we have a, a knowledge of some of their stories. Uh, and, and that should make it slightly easier to sort of jump on to have a conversation that, that's very frank and very open. Um, so yes, yeah, so I'm really pleased with, with the couple of shows that we have managed to do. Um, I also got to, to do a big show with, with Tony himself. Um, we did a, a long two-hour interview session back in November in Belfast. Um, and we were filmed for both those nights at some point. Some of those conversations uh, will probably make their way uh, into the BBC documentary. Um, that stuff that doesn't, uh, I should be making available to you as a podcast at some point as well. But obviously we are somewhat restricted uh, at this stage in terms of what we can say. Uh, although if you were there for either of the shows, you know the content already of those. Um, restricted in what we can say, what we can do uh, and when we can publish it. But, you know, I, I've agreed to kind of hold off. Um, but that's something I'm quite pleased about because I think it's really, really important that we we do continue to knock down the stigma of, of mental health. Um, we are more and more aware of it all the time. There's much more positive conversations about it. And 
I think at a time like this, when the world has gone upside down, when those of us who are in more fragile existence, and I very much think about those people who work within the entertainment, the arts industries, uh, service jobs, um, we're having our livelihoods basically taken away from us. As, as somebody else said this morning, I, I noticed um, when they were talking about everyone going home and sitting on watching their Netflix to get them through the next few weeks, it's funny how in a time of crisis everyone has turned to the artists for the relief uh, and we are often the ones who get left behind. You know, we, we, we are shunned when it comes to uh, governmental funding. The arts in Northern Ireland in particular has been cut uh, week after week, year upon year. Um, the last few years it's become harder and harder to eke out an existence. Um, many times we get asked to do stuff and, and often there's no money there at all. Um, increasingly people are willing to do work for free. They're sticking everything online. Uh, a bit like oh, some of what we do, some of what we're doing right now. Um, everything's going online. Everything is expected to be done for free. Why on earth do you want to pay the artist when there's all those people out there uh, in their bedrooms wanting to do it for, for nan? And... Um, Frankly, you know, you wouldn't ask that of anybody else. We all have to work really, really hard to to do what we do, um, and there should be some sort of recompense for it. And and whilst you know, like everybody else, I'm quite happy to do the occasional gig for free. I I will do stuff if I think it's really important. If if it's something that I'm interested in. If maybe there's some other fringe benefit for me, or more often than not, it's because I'm doing a favor for a friend who in turn will do something for me. You know, I'll I'll do a piece of work free for you, uh, for your festival, as long as you're going to do me a favor in return um but it, we shouldn't have to work like that there should be money there for us uh generally this should be how we make our living um you know everyone else gets to do it uh you know we, we don't ask plumbers and builders and uh, and everyone else whose who's work we get the benefit of um to do the stuff for us for nothing so it shouldn't be the same for for musicians and actors and writers and, and everyone else uh, i think that's really 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 important um I don't have a, <coughs> I realise I'm doing this, this is the point at which if you're on a, a YouTube feed or a, if you're on a like a Twitter tweet that's gone viral, this is the point where they pitch something and tell you to go to their Patreon or their uh, Spotify or, or Bandcamp or whatever else, I haven't got one of those. So all I would say is if you do like anything that we, we I do do or my colleagues do, um, hit us up, you know, book us for stuff. Uh, invite us along to your thing, uh, you know, book us for your broadcasts, uh, your your shows, your festivals, pay us some money, that's nice. Um, if you really like what we do and you can't come to our things, you know, buy whatever is available online, um, you know, you can make donations, there are ways around it, and I think that's I mean, really, really important at a time like this, that you support the people who are, are hopefully lifting you through some of these dark times. But yeah, I would recommend checking out uh, both these fellas. Uh, they do great work. Rob uh, has always has a book on the go. Um, they're always very, very interesting, well-researched, um, and I have learned a lot more about British comedy in particular uh, over the years, um, reading his books than I have from, from anyone else's. Uh, we do occasionally talk about doing a collaboration, whether or not that ever happens. I don't know, I think I, I'm quite enjoying the live shows, and I hope that we get a chance to do more of them. And um, look, if the doc comes out before the end of this run, um, <laughs> I will happily do another vlog about it, and we'll, we'll talk a bit more about that project. Um. Tony's been doing some great work. I, I've I've managed to. He's dragged me uh, into a um, bit of uh, oh gosh, what do you call it? Um, improv comedy twice now. Can't remember the word. Terrible. He did it on stage when we did our interview in Belfast, and he did it to me again in London in the Museum of Comedy a couple of weeks ago. Um, wasn't expecting it. I'm not really prepared for it, although it's something I've always wanted to do. Um, I, I quite enjoy the buzz of that, the, the having to think very, very quickly on your feet. Um, he is very adept at it. Uh, I'm still learning the trades, <laughs> having a clue. I would love to do a workshop or a course on it. Um, or, or just throw myself in the deep end and see if I can sink or swim properly. Um, if we ever get him back again, and I know he's quite keen to come back, uh, we'll maybe get an improv show in there as well, uh, and we'll, we'll we'll try it uh, ourselves, which would be quite a fun little idea to do. Um, but yeah, he, he's, he's doing shows up and down the country. You can go onto his website. He's on social media as well. I'll post the links in the comments just below this um, for him over in the description, probably up above. Um, I'm not sure if this is going to be on, on just on Facebook or I might stick on YouTube as well in which case they'll, they'll be in there um, but yeah check out both of them uh, Robert Ross, Rob, Ross .co uk, uh, Tony Slurry is t uh, I need to double check actually because there's been some changes to that one but on um, Twitter it's Tony Slurry 
ITS Tony Slattery is, is where you'll find him um, and definitely interact with them both. Lovely fellas. Uh, I'm very, very honoured to share a stage with them and I've been inspired by by their honesty uh, and their frankness and just their camaraderie. They've been great supports. Uh, there's been points in the last year where I've I've been in some low points and, and Rob in particular has been a great help. Um, and as I've got to know Tony, Tony has, has said some things and done some things that have that have you know helped as well without even without him realizing. Um, which is the value of, of good collaborators and friends, I guess. So yeah, so that that's uh, me for now. Um, I'll post another one of these again tomorrow, um, and uh, I have a fair idea what I'm going to talk about tomorrow already, uh, on for for the twentieth of of March. Um, I'll try and do these every day if I can. For the meantime, um, just a quick little boost. I'll, I'll talk about some of the work I'm doing. I'll talk about some of the creatives that I like and I'm inspired by. I'll post some reviews at some stage as well. In between the list, I'm trying to keep on with some of my other work, trying to finish off a couple of projects and, and hopefully just sort of steer things through uh, positively so whenever we come out of this uh, big mess, uh, I'm hitting the ground running rather than just sort of flacking behind and stressed out and, and shying away. Um, so yeah, if you if you don't follow me on social media already, uh, you'll find me on Twitter at Avalard, A-V-A-L-A-R-D. Uh, I am on Facebook as Robert J.E. Simpson. There's an official page uh, rather than the personal profile. Personal profile keep for friends and family and people I actually know. Um, follow the page instead. And uh, you'll get me on Instagram at Robert J. E. Simpson, all one word. And you also find me on cinepunked.com um, with my, my that other project that I'm very heavily involved with. Um, yeah, so uh, that's it for now. Hopefully talk to you again soon. And if you have any ideas or any requests for things that you want me to talk about or things that you'd like to see um, during the course of this, I'll, I'll dig into my collection of stuff. Um, as you can see, it's teetering behind me, some of it. There's a lot of it in storage as well at the moment. Um, but yeah, anything you want me to talk about or photographs, you want me to talk about or memories or anything else, give me a shout, let me know, comment, in the, in the comments send me a dm and um, i'll try and incorporate that during the next few weeks uh, until tomorrow then cheerio